Good morning. Folks, first of all, do not watch this video if it's going to cause you any mental anxiety or stress. Go and study for your next exam or go and enjoy the rest of your study leave, whatever keeps you happy. These are not the official SQ answers. These are purely my guesses, so you can't use them to generate an accurate estimate of your result, I'm afraid. Um, and obviously, since this is an educational channel, I'm not making any money out of it. Um, so this is purely for a non-profit to give you a rough, very rough idea. Let's rip through these really quickly, except for the problem solvings might take more time in them. Least ionic character, that's the closest electronegativities. I forgot to look that one up. Okay, we can scrub the fluorides, that's for sure, because fluorine is the most electronegative element. So if you go and look up the daybooks, you find the ones that are closest. That's the least ionic will be A on that one. It's a good start, hey? You haven't actually done that one. A uh, hydrogen bonding not occur is going to be this one because there's oxygen not directly attached to a hydrogen in it. Number three, the simple ratio, it's one glycerol to three fatty acids. Uh, which of the following is a value of 150? The only number on the other matches up to 150. Well, there's two, actually, the, the enthalpy of the reactants, but that's none of the answers. So it's the activation energy for the reverse reaction. Number five, um, what we got here. Relative rate. Shouldn't that be relative rate? Um because it's not got a second unit. It's not, sorry, it's not got a first unit, it's just seconds to minus one. Uh, what was the concentration when the time, if the time is 10 seconds, then the relative rate is 0 0.1, then you get a concentration of that. Stop rambling here, get on with it. Number six, reversible reaction. The dotted line using a catalyst. Well, the only difference the catalyst will make is the equilibrium will be achieved faster. So it is in fact B, it'll crash down here. It'll end up with the same concentration at the equilibrium point though. Number seven, are we on camera? Try and be professional, hey? Uh, enthalpy of combustion of methanol is 726. So that means for burning one mole, which is 32 grams, you release 726 uh, kilojoules. And we're not burning one mole, we're burning... Oh, we're looking for... Sorry, well, I see. We're looking for the mass needed to release this. So do some uh, proportion, you end up with 6.4. Or you can do it by moles if you're Charlie. You can absolutely do it by moles. Um, same answer. Which of the following statements is true? Sodium atom is larger than the sodium ion. That is true because we start with 281. We end up with just 28. We've lost a layer of electrons. The rest are all wrong. Surprising number of A's being the correct answer, both in this and National 5 and Advanced Higher, I think, this year. Change of plan by SQ. Which of the following is never found in compounds? Well, you do get all these, basically, except this. You don't get any ions in compounds because uh, they haven't swapped electrons in a compound. Isomer of hexanal. This is an aldehyde. Uh, aldehydes are isomers of ketones. So that would be my shortcut for this. First of all, find the ketone. There is only one. And just check uh, six carbons in this and five plus one is six carbons. There you go. That's your answer is B. Number 11. Condensation for joining up two uh, amino acids. The simple answer is this. You just know it. It's the OH of the carboxylic acid and the H of the amine group. That is the correct answer. Number 12, enthalpy of combustion is defined as being complete combustion, so these two are out. Uh, so what's wrong with this one here then? This one here is burning two moles of fuel and the definition involves only burning one mole. That's why the answer is D. Number 13, <laughs> I don't know the answer to number 13. Let's just put it that way, shall we? Because I got in trouble before for this from the SQ, they didn't like what I said. So um, I'm not able to answer number 13. I wonder, is it because A, uh, it's been a long time since I made these videos and I'm getting thick in my old age. That's possible. Is it because B, there's a Y in the day? Uh, possibly. Is it because C, the gods are against us? Or is it because D, perhaps there's something wrong with the question? I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I know what they're getting at here. They're trying to get at the fact that for an equilibrium reaction, it doesn't matter if you start with 100% reactants or 100% products. You'll always end up at the same point. That's what they're testing here. So the answer they're looking for is D. Now, I'm not going to say anything's wrong with this question. I'm just going to say that here's what would happen if you did this in real life. This here is missing a catalyst. What you need is some sort of dehydrating agent. <clears throat> and ethanol and ethanoic acid will not react at 40 degrees Celsius. 
here's something else here. Because you're keeping it at 40 degrees Celsius for days, then you start with an ester here. This ester is going to say, I'll just be leaving this party as a vapor because esters are very volatile because there's no condenser. These are not sealed systems, so they can't actually reach equilibrium. But as I said, I'm sure there's nothing wrong with this question. Maybe I'm just being thick. Number 14, uh, redox. Uh, basically, you have to take the total charge on this side, which is uh, 10 plus, total charge on this side, which is nothing, and add in what seems quite unusual number of electrons, which is 10. Number 15, uh, this is going to be, I think, uh, this is going to be oxidation because we're changing. It's an unusual oxidation, though. We've never seen this before. Uh, normally, oh no, we have seen it before. What was it? No, no, we haven't. Normally, this would be an aldehyde. So it's it's an unusual example. How do I know it's oxidation? And basically, it's the oxygen to hydrogen ratio that's changing. That's what made me decide on this. Condensation is joining molecules up. Nope. Hydration is adding water. Nope. Reduction or oxidation are the only two that are left. Number sixteen. Um, it's a chromatography question. Poppy, I hope you watch my chromatography video. Hey, I've said Charlie's question here. I'm sure um, Charlie Wright and I were uh, discussing this in class, or one very similar to it, because I think I made a mistake in the classroom version of it. Anyway, let's look onto this. The more polar, the longer the retention time. So the longer the time, so this must be the most polar, so that means that Z, the shortest time, is the least polar. So we're looking for the least polar out of these molecules. Definitely not going to be this boy here. Uh, look at the number of hydroxyls on it, or, or this, or the, this one here has no hydroxyls. That's the answer. Number 17. Uh, the apparatus is used to measure the enthalpy of combustion of ethanol, which the following would not improve the accuracy of this result. Uh, using a draft shield is good. Moving the thermometer off the surface is good. Using glass is bad, so that would not improve it. So that's the answer. And stirring the water is also good. How are we doing for time? We're doing good for time. 18. Uh, basically, it's, uh, it's these two are out because the molecules, uh, the soap's the wrong way around. And this one, the description's the wrong way around. So it's B. And number 19. Nickel oxide is added to sulfuric acid until no more nickel oxide reacts. The products are nickel sulfate and water. Nickel oxide is, if you look up your data book, it might have suggested that. Data book, nickel, nickel oxide is uh, insoluble. This is, is this not a National 5 question? Like preparation of salt. Maybe that's in higher as well, and I've missed it. Tricky one, but I wonder how many people got this right. So anyway, you're going to have to filter out the excess nickel oxide and then evaporate the remaining solution. Number 20, which the following compounds with sodium hydroxide form a salt? Now, that indicates that this is a base, of course. They're looking to, to form a salt. The other, the other thing you need is an acid. And the only carboxylic acid there is B. 21, primary alcohol. Uh, it's basically that one. The OH is on the end, as it were. In other words, it's joined to carbon, which is only joined to one other carbon. Um... Reduction, get these ones on the camera, try and be professional. Hey, there we go. Reduction of 4 methyl pentan 2 on. So there's uh, there's the pentan 2 on. I didn't bother with the 4 methyl, I know, don't shout to me, I was feeling lazy. It doesn't matter, it's there. Um, results in the molecule. Here's the change in the molecule, guys. So reduction's unusual, but we are going that way. We're turning a ketone into an, uh, sorry, a, a ketone into an alcohol. So these two extra hydrogens have joined the, oops, have joined the party. So in other words, your molecule will gain two grams uh, per mole of molecule that you started with. This one here, ah, oh, it's a Kieran question, isn't it? Uh, leave it to the end because it's pure donkey work. 16 grams of oxygen is half a mole. Don't forget, uh, oxygen is diatomic. Um, which one of these matches up to a half a mole, basically? And the answer is, uh, in the old tradition of the SQA, at the end, it's the last one. N2O4 is dinitrogen tetroxide. Uh, there's a lot going on here to get you one mark. No wonder this is Kieran's question. Uh, so 92 for the GFM, so 46 is half a mole. I'm doing these as quickly as possible to avoid boring you to death, by the way, guys. Uh, number 24, are we on camera? Yes, we are. 24, uh, this is an interesting one. This, if you're with me in my class, is what I'll call the thumbs and fingers model. 
Um, this is about the worst case scenario for thumbs and fingers because aluminium sulfate is Al2SO4-3. So for every one of these you've got, you've got two aluminiums and three sulfates. Only we don't have one, we've got a quarter. Um, so for every one you've got two aluminiums, so if you've got a quarter of a mole, you've got two times that, which is half a mole of positive ions. So it's only the aluminiums we care about here. 25 addition of hydrogen chloride. Problem solving. Problem solving one to finish with, guys. Uh, to an alkene can give a mixture of two products. Welcome to advanced higher content. But that's okay because they've explained it nicely here. It says here, the product produced is the, uh, is the major product. Major product is formed when the hydrogen atom of the HCl attaches to whichever of these two carbon atoms has the greatest number of hydrogens on it. So if we look at these two carbon atoms, this one here has zilch hydrogens on it. And this one here has one hydrogen. So if we follow the logic here, the hydrogen of the HCl is going to go on to here and the chlorine is going to go on to here. Uh, basically, which one does that match up to? And the answer is uh, B. That's it. These two are out. Um, why did I discard these two? Oh, because the chlorine was the wrong way around here. And the, the no chlorine here. Um, what is this one? Oh, no. The two chlorines in this one. That's why that one's wrong as well. Okay, simple answer to that. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.